All right, guys, it's been a while. I know I'm sorry about that. I got into other stuff and it, it's like I have way too much stuff going on in my life. But now I'm trying to work on a schedule to where I'm taking care of all my errands in the beginning of the day and then working on YouTube from like later at night, 6 30, 8 o'clock, something until the end of the night. That's the schedule I'm trying to do now. And uh, I, I know I was away for like a month. I was posting on Instagram, like my Instagram stories and pictures and stuff. So if you want to go follow me there, uh, if you want to keep up with me or anything, you could do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this video is going to be about Prismatic Labs, uh, their product or development uh, for Ethereum, which is a sharding implementation, I guess. I think I have notes right here that I recorded all this already and... I, well, I didn't because I didn't press record. <laughs> so uh, that's why we're here again and it's weird. Ugh. Yeah, so I took notes and this video is just going to be like, instead of like my past videos in the past, because that's what a past video is, uh, where like I've done like my Doge Ethereum ones and, and all about Ethereum gas and like those put together videos that are like researched and scripted and everything. Uh, what I'm going to do is just research a little bit at a time so this video series is going to be like multi-part thing as i'm like learning about stuff i guess and then just releasing them when i have something to say pretty much so this first one is going to be like can we trust uh prismatic labs and just doing like a little bit of a background thing on the people that worked work with prismatic labs and their past and and how it got started and, and stuff like that yeah, so I'm going to pause for a second, go over my notes that are just slightly out of screen. Ooh, here they come. Oh, yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to read them and then we're going to get back into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is, uh, I don't even remember if I mentioned this yet, but uh, Prismatic Labs and their product development, the thing that they're developing is called Prism. And uh, they're not the only implementation that's being developed for sharding and scaling Ethereum right now. There's this one uh, sharding introduction uh, research and development compendium uh, on the Ethereum GitHub that shows, uh, well, instead of me, I can just point here and it'll appear right here. So on GitHub, it lists all the implementations uh, and there's uh, Pi EVM Trinity uh, which is Topolis, Prism, Drops of Diamond, Lighthouse, Nimbus, Pegasus, and uh, a deprecated one sharding utility something. I haven't looked into any of them, and uh, I'm probably not going to look into any of these other ones for at least a little while. But uh, yeah, so Prism is the one at the top of the list, so that's the one that we're taking a look at now. And also, there was like a Reddit post the other day and that's what sparked this video instead of uh, me doing like the 20, 30 other videos that I have like listed and planned and everything. This is what what's going on. How are these batteries in this audio recorder like almost dead already? I just put them in at the start of this video. Uh, anyway, we have, we have reserves. So Prismatic Labs, uh, they have a Medium account, which is like a, a blog website, more or less, like a, a typey blog, not a a vloggy vlog blog. Uh, yeah, so they've been releasing development updates or uh, I haven't read through all them. I guess there's like 24 of them now. They've been releasing bi-weekly ones. So once every two weeks since the middle of April of last year, I believe. And they ha I think maybe they missed it once for doing every two weeks. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but they've been extremely consistent with that. So that's a thumbs up there for, for them. So uh, good on them for that. So the next stuff that I want to talk about in this video is just a background of the developers and, and how it got started and, and all that. So uh, the first guy is Raul Jordan, who is a uh, co-founder of Prismatic Labs. Let me just look up his LinkedIn account real quick and uh, see how accurate I am with that. So he's listed as the co-lead on his, I have to sneeze. So he's listed as a co-lead on the uh, on the GitHub or on the LinkedIn page. So uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, he also has a website, RaulJordan.com, which uh, gives some of his background as well as his LinkedIn uh, profile does the same thing. So RaulJordan.com. Uh, but basically, uh, he was going to Harvard 
to study computer science. And then he received a uh, Thiel Fellowship grant, which gave him $100,000, uh, which let him take two years off to pursue his own interest. So uh, just taking it out of that, uh, he, I'm assuming he took off a school and didn't get his degree, which seems to be working out for him so far. But yeah, so when he went to pursue his own interests and everything, it ended up getting into cryptocurrency and then getting into Ethereum and then starting Prism, which is uh, the sharding implementation and, and scaling solution to Ethereum. Uh, after that, uh, Prism has received over $900,000 in funding in 2018 alone. So uh, I know it's just the beginning of 2019 now, and I don't know how much funding they've got, especially since the market is kind of tanking now. But $900,000 is uh, quite a bit of money for what they're developing and everything. I haven't looked through their uh, medium bi-weekly updates yet, so I don't know like how they plan to use the money. I think with, with the small development group that they have, which, which I'll talk about uh, in a minute, uh, with the small development group that they have, I don't think they need that much money. They just get like a studio to, to work out of or an apartment or whatever. And uh, just code, I guess. Also, I want to mention uh, Raul Jordan's age, which uh, I'm just kind of piecing this together just because it says on his LinkedIn that he started Harvard in 2013. So I'm assuming that he started college when he was 18 years old, which would put him to be about 24 years old uh, today, I guess. In the scheme of things, like that doesn't mean much. Like I'm trying to say this as like uh, young people have less experience and are less capable or whatever, but that doesn't mean much because uh, it seems so far that, that they're a pretty capable group of people and, and that he's quite capable of himself. In 2015, and again from his LinkedIn website, uh, he was a co-founder of a uh, of a company called Gen X, which pretty much uh, basically it links together uh, college students or, or younger students with adults, hopefully in the same field. So then the adults get to mentor the younger kids and uh, teach them what they learn and everything, and then it gives the older people like a more sense of purpose in, in your life and everything. Uh, which is cool. It's awesome, especially like uh, I know it's a it's a very fulfilling thing to mentor someone and help them achieve stuff uh, w with all that and whatever. So uh, as far as I know, uh, that website is still active and everything. He also co-founded another company, I guess, called uh, Kindplex. So actually, I take it back about uh, his Gen X generational exchange. Uh, website service. Uh, I don't believe that that's still uh, active. I haven't found a website for it or anything, but this uh, Kindplex thing, uh, this is still active. And what this is, is a, um, oh, I need to be speaking louder. But what this Kindplex thing is, is just a way to aggregate a bunch of uh, scientific projects and uh, and technical news and, and stuff. And, and because the idea is like all this new technology stuff is scattered and he wanted to consolidate everything to a website. And I also think that this website also lets you link with people and projects and stuff, or at least has ways of linking with people and finding out how to connect people together and all that with, with the projects if you're interested in them and all that. Uh, so it was in October 2014 that he started that. January 2018 which is uh, coincidentally the same time that Prismatic Labs was started. Uh, so January 2018 is a ZK Capital, uh, which the description here is uh, part of the core team of blockchain protocol investors at ZK Capital, a technology-focused investment firm. I don't know anything about ZK Capital. I, I should look it up real quick, but I know I've heard about them. It seems like he's just part of the core team of blockchain protocol investors. I'm not going to look too much into it, but their website just says research focused blockchain investment firm. So I guess it's what I do. I mean, I, I don't have a firm or anything, but I guess they just research blockchains and then offer investment advice to people or something. So now Prismatic Labs, he started in January of 2018, which coincidentally 
all other people from their LinkedIn's also say January 2018. So I guess they all started at the same time. But yeah, that's Raul Jordan. And uh, I'm going to see if I can find any YouTube videos about him and watch them and see if I can pick up anything else about him before I switch on to uh, Preston Von Loon. So there is actually quite a bit of stuff, uh, videos, and uh, here's another one right here, with an interview. So that's good. I'm not going to watch all this stuff right now, but it's it's very good to see uh, different videos of, of these guys actually talking because then you get a sense of their character and all that. And for the minute that I watched this video, he, he has a very good uh, character, I guess you could say. All right, so next we're going to switch over to Preston Von Loon. And uh, Preston graduated from Middle Texas State University in 2013, and he held a bunch of software engineering-related jobs uh, since then. Then before he worked for Prism, he worked for Google in their Display and Video 360 department, which isn't what it sounds like. You would think it's like 360 video uh, related stuff, but it's actually, from what I can tell from the website linked on his LinkedIn account, it's actually like an analytics and insight company. Uh, uh, I don't know, I, I haven't looked like more into it. Again, uh, well, there are some interviews and uh, stuff with Preston that I'm not gonna listen to right now. I'll listen to tomorrow, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that's good that he has uh, like a public presence and is speaking and stuff to show his character and, and all that stuff. So it's not like some shady crypto scam company where there's no like vocal public figure or something like that or whatever. So next we have Terence Zhao. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. So Terence got his master's degree in computer engineering from uh, University of California in 2010. And he also worked for the same company, Riverbed, Riverbed Technology, for seven and a half years, which uh, so that makes it seem to me that he's committed and faithful and dedicated to the jobs that he takes on. So Terrence is the first one. So Raul Jordan and Preston Von Loon are both listed as team leads on the website. And then Terrence is listed as a team member. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what his role is. We'll, we'll go, we'll try to see if, yeah, he does have a LinkedIn. So uh, we'll see it, what his LinkedIn says. So his LinkedIn just says, uh, Ethereum protocol developer, Prismatic Labs working on scaling the Ethereum via sharding. Prismatic Labs is a non-for-profit non group that focuses on implementing the first sharding client for the Go Ethereum project. So uh, yeah, I guess he's just, uh, more in not in charge of development, but helping with development as well. Terence, along with Preston and Raul, are also active on uh, Twitter, and you can see that they're all three of them are passionate about Ethereum and stuff. So, more good things in my book. So the next person on the Prismatic Labs uh, development developer list is Yatoro Mori. Uh, again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, he's listed as another team member in Ethereum Dev. So if we do look at Yatoro's uh, LinkedIn, we can see that he graduated University of Michigan in 2011. Uh, he worked developing, uh, I guess, some iOS stuff uh, just as an intern uh, at this, uh, that is this, since interning for the iOS development stuff, he's worked his way up to uh, becoming a senior software engineer. Uh, and he's worked at that job for four years and four months at MongoDB and uh, also a software engineer at, uh, and then left that job. And at UMA, he's a, currently a software engineer. What's interesting about this is that uh, he doesn't list uh, Prismatic Labs or Ethereum at all on his LinkedIn account. Also on his GitHub page, he doesn't have any uh, activity since November of 2018. Now, that's not to say that he's uh, not part of Prismatic Labs anymore or was never a part. Or it, It's not to say that it's necessarily a bad thing. Maybe he's just like Prismatic Labs and working on Prism is just like a side project of his or a hobby or, or something that he's doing part time and, and he has like his day job, so to call it. And it's not like he's uh, UMA, like where he's working now isn't a blockchain company because uh, 
they're pretty much, uh, uh, they want to open, uh, let me get a minute to get my words together. I mean, I don't really know how to word it. I guess they're working on decentralized financial contracts to enable uh, universal financial market accessibility. And yeah, here he is uh, down here, just listed as uh, just working in engineering. So, and then finally, the last person I want to talk about is Nishant Das, who is uh, the final member I want to talk about, like I said, and he's a, also listed as a team member and Ethereum dev on the Prismatic Labs uh, website. Nishant does appear to be active uh, with Prismatic Labs because when we look at his GitHub page, we see a bunch of comments from uh, March 2019. Also on his LinkedIn page, he does uh, list working as a software engineer for Prismatic Labs. He's also based out of Malaysia. I'm not 100% sure if he lives there now or, or anything, but also previously Yatoro uh, on his LinkedIn, it says that he's based out of Japan. So I'm not 100% sure how that works out with them meeting up uh, the whole group for Prismatic Labs with them meeting up or if they just do everything over uh, Skype or, or uh, the Google, the Google one, Google Hangouts or, or whatever. Uh, or uh, I, I know Preston, I think, is located in New York. And I think that's the same for Raul as well. Or maybe it's San Francisco or something like that. But, but I know Preston and Raul are, are close to each other. So it does seem that Nishant does have a background that's not just in software development and stuff like that. He has a background in aerospace and in economics and finance so that that's definitely a good background to have when you're on a uh, anything to do with cryptocurrency and nishant is following quite a few ethereum people he's following uh oh terrence uh and prismatic labs oh and raul jordan and pressed up uh, preston van loon i was gonna say that he's following a bunch of ethereum people but he's not following anyone uh related to uh to Prismatic Labs, but it turns out I was totally wrong about that. So that's it for this video. Uh, the end of the story, uh, Prismatic Labs has a pretty impressive team and they can be trusted. Uh, there's nothing I see that so far that shows that anything, there's nothing to worry about that I see or anything. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, you can follow me on all social media and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I think next I'm going to go through their medium bi-weekly updates and uh, just get a sense about that and then make a video about that. So that'll be the next video. Uh, yeah, you can donate also in my donation addresses uh, below in the description and all that. But end of the video, take care, guys. Thank you and goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.